دیوت این استدی کریستوویل نموده سهادران بسیلیوس تومس و نامن ششتا کتولیکا باوا نموده سهادران ترمینی ماری روباچن ماری اچن ماری شماشن ماری کنیستری ماری نموکی اتاووم ریپتا وستلا مکالی We are extremely glad to address you with these few words as you gather to celebrate the Patriarchal Day, which is the commemoration of the establishment of the Holy Throne of Antioch by St. Peter, the chief among the apostles. It was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians, the book of Acts chapter 11. We are overwhelmed with joy when we hear the slogan Antiochia Malankara Bandam Nina Varate, even from the little innocent children. We appreciate your loyalty to the Holy Throne of Antioch. This age-old relationship is a bond of true faith and true love, the faith of St. Peter, who proclaimed that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the Living God and the love of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us. The love which inspired the saints to become martyrs. We know that the word Antioch itself causes and arouses strong emotions for you. Amen, Yangel Maranalum, Antiochia Marakila. And I also, as your patriarch and spiritual father, respond to that and say to all of you, Nian Ningale, Marakumenkil, and Tevalatupke, Ene Marakate. How can we forget your love and your faithfulness throughout all these centuries? How can we forget the suffering and pain you endured in your struggle against both outsiders and insiders who wanted to cut you off of your spiritual mother, the Holy Church of Antioch? How can we forget the sacrifices of great church fathers who abandoned their lands and families and traveled to Malankara in order to support you and guide you in the path of the Lord? How can we forget the Saint more Ignatius Elias III, whose peronar you have just celebrated, and who asked the Lord to make his resting place in Omalur, and the Lord granted his wish. Namude Vatselia Makale, Ningale Kanile, Krishnamani Poles Nehikunu, Namute Hridayan, Nindraye Ningal Anu. من گالو دولا نموت است نه هم و رنکان وکا کوال ایلا. Beloved children of our church in India, you are very near and dear to our heart. We want you to be protected and safeguarded like the apple of our eye. We love you so deeply and tenderly. We very much wanted to be physically with you, beloved children, during these Patriarchal Day celebrations, and to personally witness the solemn vow you are making. We started making travel arrangements, even if it were for a few hours' visit, but we canceled it in order not to cause any unintended harm concerning the situation there. Therefore, we delegated His Eminence Metropolitan Mor Gevargis Gaurie, our Patriarchal Vicar of Belgium, France, and Luxembourg, to represent us at this historical event. We are also very happy that His Eminence Mortitos Yeldo, our Metropolitan of the Malankara Archdiocese in North America, as well as His Eminence. Mortimotheus Matthew, the Patriarchal Secretary for Indian Affairs, are with you present today at these celebrations. Celebrating Patriarchal Day has become an annual event in our church in India. However, 
This year's celebration carries a special significance in light of the injustice brought upon all of you, resulting from the attempt of trying to resolve the issues using non-Christian means. Therefore, your gathering today to express your love and loyalty to the Holy Throne of Antioch remind us of your forefathers' steadfast faith and strong loyalty as they lined up holding tight the rope attached to the Kunin Kurushu when they rejected the pressure of Portuguese trying to force them to change their faith and loyalty. What your forefathers refused centuries ago, you will not accept now. Today, you will not detach yourselves from the spiritual, invisible, umbilical cord which ties you to your mother church. We also trust that the Indian society, which is known for tolerance and peaceful coexistence, and which gave birth to Gandhiji, as well as the government of India through its judicial just system, will not tolerate injustice brought upon you. We vividly remember the words of the Honorable Prime Minister of India, His Excellency Mr. Narendra Modi, when we met him during our first apostolic visit to India. His Excellency assured us that religious tolerance and freedom of expression for every citizen in India is guaranteed. On that same day, exactly three years ago, Modiji issued an important statement condemning the attacks against Christian churches in the North and promising freedom of worship to all. Our church has been a part of the Indian fabric for almost 2,000 years. It has played a significant role in the faith, education, and social life of the country. Therefore, the faithful of this venerable church are entitled to believe and worship according to the ancient traditions received from their forefathers. The state government of Kerala can play a very constructive role in solving the century-old church dispute. We are also confident that the Chief Minister of Kerala, His Excellency Mr. Pinare Vijayan, will spare no effort in his fair and objective mediation to bring an end to this adverse situation. Our beloved children, we are aware and saddened by the news that recently after the 3rd of July of last year, you have lost some of the churches. Even more painful is to hear that our children were brutally beaten up just for practicing their rights to worship in their own parishes where they were praying since the establishment of these parishes. We also hear that our priests are prohibited from entering cemeteries to conduct burial services for the faithful departed. You may be suffering for your faith and convictions, and this causes you and the entire church a great pain. But remember, if we suffer with Christ, we will be glorified with him in the world to come, as St. Peter comforts us saying, if you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Without God's knowledge, nothing happens. He is seeing all these things, all the injustice you suffer. It all works together for good for those who love God. We therefore encourage you to consider the sufferings of this world not worth comparing to the glory about to be revealed, as St. Paul tells us in his epistle to the Romans. We pray the Holy Spirit to guide you and comfort you in your sufferings. We have no doubt that all members of our church in India, from both factions of the church, wish to live in peace and harmony. And we love them all from both factions. However, 
Reconciliation in our church in India cannot be achieved without implementing justice and preserving the dignity of all. Since our enthronement by the grace of God as the Patriarch of Antioch and all the East, we did not cease from praying for peace as well as taking initiatives to bring reconciliation and harmony. We made our sincere intentions very clear during our first apostolic visit to India. We even constituted an Episcopal committee to conduct dialogue for reconciliation. However, our efforts were not reciprocated. We very much expected a similar committee to be formed by the other faction to initiate dialogue in India itself. Meanwhile, pledging to do all that we can to facilitate such dialogue. The inaction of the Velocum in this regard has greatly disappointed us. However, we continue to hope for such a dialogue, for everything is possible to God, the Lord of Peace. Until such efforts bear fruits, your response to that inaction should continue to be in a Christian manner, rooted in prayers and fasting. While no one can deny your right to express your disappointment and frustration in response to the many injustices manifested in the attempts to capture parish churches and appoint vicars against the will of the faithful, we encourage you to voice your concerns and to express your feelings and conduct yourselves in a Christian way, avoiding hatred and violence and using peaceful and legal means, which are powerful, so we can see from the history of your own country, India, which achieved its independence through nonviolent resistance movement led by the great leader M.K. Gandhi. During these days of great Lent, beloved children, let us fast with love and humility so that God may accept all our praise and good intentions. We may feel weak and vulnerable and unable to do much about our current situation, but our God and His grace is sufficient for us. We know that the prayers of Yuldah Thaloho, St. Peter, and all the saints will miraculously help our church solve the issues we face now. We ask you all to continue to be fervent in your prayers for the Holy Church. We take this opportunity to express our love and appreciation to our beloved brother in Christ, the Catholicos, his beatitude, Mor Basilius Thomas Onamen, who dedicated most of his life for the Church. He worked tirelessly to protect the Church in India, facing great challenges even at this stage of his life. We tenderly remember the sacrifices and achievements of his beatitude and his place in the hearts of the faithful in India and elsewhere. May the Heavenly Father bless him with good health. We also acknowledge the fruitfulness of each brother metropolitan in India who works very hard day and night for the glory of God and we likewise appreciate the efforts of each priest who serves the church to build the kingdom of God with sincerity and honesty. We value the preachers of the word of God who work diligently for the salvation of souls through their ministry. And we are proud of our church in India indeed. At the same time, we exhort you all, the clergy, to live a life of humility and holiness with prayers and fastings, to set an example in the society in which you live. We carry all of you in our heart and pray for you all. May the grace of God be with you. We extend our apostolic benedictions to all of you. Devam Angura Hikati. Antiochia Malankara Bandam Inar Varate. Antiochia Malankara Bandam Inar Varate. 
Antioquia, Malankara, Bandam, Inar, Varate.